Hi, my good people. Welcome to our third episode of Finance for Families podcast. I'm your host, Linda Mack. I like to think of myself as a fire that is igniting those much-needed family conversations on finances. On our previous episode, uh, we focused on you. You know, talked about financial conversations have to start with you. You have to take time and have money self-talk. And through the episode, we talked on why you should do it. And we also shared some ways um, to conduct your money self-talk sessions. So that's an episode that's definitely worth listening to. So please, if you haven't, please make sure you do. Today, we're getting a bit intimate and delving into financial intimacy. We want to take a deeper look into couples talking money. But maybe first, eh, let's just start off by trying to define who couples are. For me, if I have a pet chicken or a pet cat or a dog, and it's just the two of us in the house, so are we a couple? <laughs> so uh, maybe, okay, let's just say, maybe first for this episode, uh, a couple should refer to two human beings. And uh, then now from there, we try and answer. So who exactly is a couple? And I think to be able to answer that, we just try and think through when do two people actually reach that point where you say, now we are a couple. Yeah, Is it when your eyes meet across the room and he asks you out and you say yes, or you ask him out and he says yes? Yeah, Or is it when you first go on that date and it's going so well so that by the end of that first date, you've already fixed a second date? Or uh, that time when you're confident enough in that relationship to take your phone and change uh, how you've saved him or her and uh, now you can save them as a uh, you know be honey babes em wangu you know going on way to become impermanent yeah now this would be debatable to the point where you know we'll just be here going round and round but for me i think two people become a couple when uh, you make that uh, commitment to each other now, it doesn't have to be a uh, grand rural you know, all those introductions, weddings, or doing a billboard, professing your forever love to your love, yeah? But I, I view a couple as those two people who've come in and are committing to each other in a manner that is known to both of you. So it's not just me committing and the other person is not aware that I'm committed, but it's both of us coming in and saying we are committed and we are doing it in a manner that's um, known to both of us. And as well, maybe even letting the people around you know that, you know, now we are committed to this relationship. So for me, definition of um, couple, according to the dictionary of Linda Mark, is two people coming together and intentionally committing to love, to respect, to honor, you know, trust each other. And then working constantly to do better and to be better together. Yeah. Now, for me, this is the best point to start talking finances. Yeah, And talking finances does not actually start with talking. We start with observation. You know, when you start off a relationship, you start off at that stage where you're both mostly working to impress one another. During this impressing stage, it's good to keep observing your potential partner's money mindset and also have light conversations about finances, you know, just to get a better understanding of how each of you relate with money. When you get to the point that you're now both intentionally committing to the relationship, then the conversation can become more intense. But because you've had a lot, you've done a lot of observation and light talk on finances up until this point, then it's likely not to feel awkward and uncomfortable for either of you. Yeah. Because relationships bring two people with different mindsets together. So you have to, again, take time to learn how to talk finances um, because it's very critical. When you talk finances, you are actually helping to protect your relationship because, you know, we've said you get, you're getting a better understanding of your partner's money psychology and you're also getting a better understanding of your own money psychology through the eyes of overloved one, yeah? Because... To be honest, not to be an alarmist, but it's good, uh, you know, that we all know various, various studies that I've seen as I was doing research on this um, show that money problems 
are a leading cause of conflict, uh, you know, of separation, and they're actually the second leading cause of divorce. So when I say con these conversations um, can be very critical in helping to protect our relationships, yeah? So do take time to talk money because now that will help uh, couples out here to be able to address these issues such as financial expectations, um, debt, the income disparities, and in so doing avoid the stress and the anxiety, yeah? And promote a healthy financial relationship, you know? Now, when it comes to initiating money conversations, because yes, you're seeing, yeah, I want to protect my relationship. I want us to be better placed um, in terms of our sink, our financial sink than we were um, when we had not fully committed. So how do we initiate these money conversations? How do I now as a part in this um, coupleship, do I initiate this uh, money conversations? I would say one, start off um, very light conversations because again, remember two people, different ideologies about money, money management. So when you start it off as a light conversation, it kind of provides an equal ground for sharing. So, you know, everyone is coming in very comfortable because it's a very sensitive um, topic. But when you start it light, you know, you've observed, you're picking a few uh, things here and there, and then you're coming it off and, and pursuing it from a light conversation uh, perspective. Yeah. And then two, and I think this, we, uh, we had mentioned this in our first episode, is make it a date. We are a couple, we are working together for and with each other. So let's take it out there, you know, get away from the comfort zone. If you're living together, um, make a date, go out and savor the experience out there as you're talking money with each other. It's, uh, it removes any distractions because if you're living with others, you know, they're likely to distract this session. So when you're out there, you know, you've committed that time to be able to handle your money discussions as well when you're doing it out there we said it gives you the seriousness you it makes you place the seriousness that your money conversations deserves yeah and then for me it's just to also third is also be open to giving each other ample time to share your thoughts and your ideas so that you on how you know why you are the way you are how you're managing your money this is especially for those partners out there who are more financially literate and you may tend like I know it all so like even when you're having these sessions um I'm initiating it and I'm the one who's captaining it and basically 90 percent of the conversation is me so your significant other feels um is likely to feel insecure and inadequate yeah so yeah so as I said you know one Try and start it off as a light conversation, uh, make it a date um, out there, and then just make sure you give each other time. Give each other time to be able to share your thoughts and your ideas on where we are financially, uh, where I am in as an individual financially, and how we can grow together financially. All that. Give each other time to be able to share ideas around that. Then now that we are both slowly as a couple getting comfortable talking about money, how do we ensure that we both get the best out of these conversations, yeah? Um, one is, as a party to this conversation, let's both be vulnerable enough that we can openly and intimately share our experiences, those experiences that have shaped our beliefs about how we are managing our money now. This sharing should be without judgment and should be not be used against you later on in the relationship. I know this is sometimes very hard, but it's very, very important, yeah? Because then that makes um, each of us individually willing to open up and share. And through the sharing, we get to learn and we get to know how to grow from, from that. So one, let's be vulnerable and openly share our experiences. Yeah. Second, I think it's keep it honest. Yeah. The best way that you can both make it work is if you're honest. Like, let's say if you're honest about your debt situation, full you know, full disclosure, then your partner may actually have a solution or will give you a recommendation that will make it work for you, yeah? If you're honest about your spending habits, um, you know, they might be able to point something that you've never thought about. Let me tell you, uh, for me, I love shoes. I've 
always loved shoes. It's my default pick me up. Um, and I was very honest with uh, my mister. And even before he, you know, he got access to see my shoe collection, <laughs> um, he knew that for me that that was it. You know, like I would feel good when I'm out there and I'm in new shoes or I can just smell them and see them. Yeah. So when we had our first uh, baby, and I guess the obsession moved from my shoes to, you know, shoes, even baby shoes. And uh, we reached a point where he had to point out, he's like, man, the baby can hardly walk. And yet, you know, she has more pairs of shoes than him. <laughs> Who needs to wear these shoes to work? And yeah, so um, that kind of made me stop and think. And I was like, oh yeah, it doesn't make financial sense to be buying, to have this many shoes to match the outfits for this child who can can hardly walk. And um, yeah, so irrespective of uh, my excitement as a first time mom, I found myself putting bricks on on that. But it's because, you know, when he saw me doing that, he could relate to the fact that, um, yeah, I know this is where she's coming from. So let me approach it from from this. But it, it can only happen when you're honest with your, with your partner about your your finances, you know, your um, spending habits, you know, your debts and all that, yeah. And thirdly, I think it's also to share financial expectations. And this is both ways. One, you share what your financial expectations are of yourself. These are like, what are your own individual financial goals? And then you're also open to share what are your expectations from your partner? You know, what do you expect them to be able to um, to do and or us? Uh, the two of us to be able to do together so when you do that you know then that's when you get to talk about how do we budget together how do we handle bills together how do we save jointly and all that and finally i think it's also good to always motivate and create this empathetic and respectful feedback mechanism because remember again it's not enough to just talk about finances we are it's good to also recognize that we are different stages of our own pers pan personal financial management journeys, yeah? And we are individuals and we are able to do this um, together and we need to support one another. Uh, we are all facing different financial stressors. So we have to learn how to uplift, to encourage each other and share feedback, not in an accusatory way, but in a loving and supporting manner. Yeah. So I think in conclusion, um, it's important to talk about money for all. three main reasons. One, as a couple, you get to understand each other and then you're able now from that work through any financial insecurities um, that you have you able to work them through them together you're able to support one another in case um, either of you is going through any financial stressors and be able to deal with those situations that maybe in the future could actually be a form of you no know, great conflict um, between you two but if now you're having these conversations, then you're able to deal with all these situations on an ongoing basis um, to the point where they don't build up and become uh, a reason for conflict later on. Um, secondly, and then it's also to set yourselves up um, to achieving your financial goals. Again, two heads are better than one, especially when those two heads are acting as one, you're coming together, you're understanding each other's financial expectations, which is very important. You know, when you get um, your partner to understand, these are my expectations of you and you agree that, yes, this is okay, this is doable. And your partner says, these are my expectations, my financial expectations of you. And you agree and you know. So you know what you're working towards. Uh, he or she knows what they're working towards. And now you're coming together to work um, together. You are supporting each other on your own individual financial goals as well as jointly working um, together towards your joint financial goals. You go pretty far, you know, as opposed as to assuming that, yes, they should know that this is my expectation of them or he should know this is what I expect of him uh, financially or she should know this is what I expect of her financially. It's putting it out there on the table, being honest about being vulnerable, saying, I'm thinking this because of one, two, three. And they say, okay, fine. I agree with one, two, but three, I don't agree because of this. 
four or five reasons um like that so um being able to talk openly having these conversations actually sets you both up um to achieving your own individual financial goals and then also achieving your joint um financial goals yeah and thirdly i think it also improves your overall financial health yeah um as an individual your financial health as an individual and your your relationship financial health as a couple yeah because problems shared uh problems halved you know your financial health greatly improves when you know there's someone out there who's supporting uh you know who's in your corner you can go to bounce off ideas uh try and see if you can come up with solutions together they may not have all the answers but just the fact that you know that they are there and they're there for me i think for me that is also good enough yeah as a starting point um yes so when one partner um is maybe more financially literate than the other one you're also able to now come together and share all this information so you're not looking at it like there's an imbalance of power but we are seeking we are coming together as one and saying we are coming out here and talking about these ideas what i know i share what you know you share so we're able to grow each other yeah and through growing one another and supporting one another we're improving our financial health or financial wellness yeah so um i think in conclusion let's just agree that talking finances especially for couples it's very very important uh yes we'll get to prevent all those money arguments now and in the future we are able to sit and address any issues um that can that are there now that are um, can come up but especially issues when it comes to income disparities and all that you know we see we've seen the way it can improve your financial health as an individual and um as a couple and it's also you know i think good because then it helps us to avoid any anxieties any stresses that come with um the financial situations that of course come because we are out here in the world we are faced with so many things um out here it's just now being able to you, know, you can lose your job um you have you get financial commitments maybe now your parents are out here they need medical support the um, medical bills are piling up and all that maybe you have previous debt that you're still trying to pay there are so many issues and as we've said sometimes it's not just your partner will come up with solutions for them but the fact that that they in your corner that you have someone you can go in and talk to and they know they can listen to you and then just be there for you as you know you try to navigate how do we deal with this situation this financial situation is good enough yeah so let's be open to having these conversations with our partners and um you know just take it as part of that commitment we've said couples are the ones who are intentional they've come together and intentionally committed to one another part of that commitment should be committing to talking to each other being honest to with one another when it comes to uh, our financial situation being open to be critiqued you know so that you know positive feedback you look at the critique as positive feedback um so that you can grow your financial uh, situation either individually or now mm, the two of you as a couple uh being open and honest with one another but also being sensitive and uh, empathetic or even as you're having this uh financial conversations with uh with each other yeah because yes money is a very sensitive topic and uh, we we don't want to see um start having these conversations and you feel like now you know your partner is undermining you and not listening to you or not taking up um not being honest about their financial journey yeah so um I think for me it's very important and I hope through this episode we've been able to see um the importance of having these conversations as a couple and being intentional um diarising and making sure that we have for our individual benefit and our joint benefit as a couple. So that's it for today. Um so for our next episode 
we want to look into how do you talk money with your parents, hmm? the elders in our families, because already we know money is a very sensitive topic. And some, for some of us, the homes we grew up in, we never talked about money. And as children, we were not really allowed to have opinions. And of course, to your parents, you're always a child. No matter how old you grow, you're still their child. So then, how do you start these conversations? You know, get to sit your parents down and be the one to say, okay, now we need to have these conversations. We need to talk money, however sensitive it is. <laughs> so please make sure you join us uh, next week for that episode. Yep. That's it for today, family. Again, the Finance for Comics podcast is here to ignite the open, honest conversation about money and investing in our families. Let's get talking and empower each other for a better financial future. Thank you and see you on the next episode.